In this video, I will explain the properties of infinite limits, and I'll show you how to use those properties to find the overall limit when you have a sum or a difference or a product or a quotient. So here are the properties of infinite limits. Let C and L be real numbers, and let the limit of f of x as x approaches C equal infinity, and let the limit of g of x as x approaches C equal L. So I really want you to focus on these two things. Notice that f of x has an infinite limit, and notice that g of x has an actual limit. So as you look at these properties, every time you see f of x, you should be thinking infinity. And whenever you see g of x, you should be thinking a regular number. So if you add an infinity function with a regular number function, the limit is infinity. Or if you subtract infinity and a regular number function, the limit is infinity. Uh, now, for the next two, we're talking products, but for the first one, imagine that the limit of function g is a positive number. So basically, this rule is saying if you take an infinite function and multiply it by a positive limit function, the limit is positive infinity. But if you take an infinite function and you multiply it by a negative limit function, you get negative infinity. And then we have the quotient. If you take a number function and divide that by an infinity function, the limit is going to be zero. So take a look at my oversimplification. Now this is not accurate notation at all. It's just to help you understand and remember the rules that I just gave you. So the bottom line is if you do infinity plus or minus a number, the limit is infinity. If you do infinity times a positive number, the limit is in positive infinity. If you do infinity times a negative number, you're gonna get negative infinity for the limit. And if you do a number divided by infinity, the limit's going to be zero. Let's clarify these rules by looking at a couple of examples. Let's find the limit as x approaches zero of one plus one over x squared. So first of all, let's look at this as two separate functions. Let's think about the limit as x approaches zero of one. And let's think about the limit as x approaches zero of one over x squared. So the limit of a constant is just going to be the constant. So this is just gonna give us one. What about the limit of one over x squared as x approaches zero? Well, as the denominator gets tinier and tinier and tinier, you're going to get an overall value that is larger and larger and larger. So the limit is infinity. So what we have is a numerical limit plus an infinite limit. So referring back to our properties, this is the sum or difference. Uh, when you have an infinite limit and a numerical limit, the overall limit will be infinity. Example eight, the limit as x approaches one from the left of x squared plus one over cotangent pi x equals what? Let's start with the numerator we learned that we can evaluate the limit of a polynomial by direct substitution. So if we let x equal one, then that's just going to be one squared plus one. So that's really just one plus one, which is two. 
All right, so that was the easy part. Now we have to analyze the limit as x approaches 1 from the left of cotangent pi x. So let's break this down. Uh, cotangent is cosine over sine. So this would be the same thing as cosine pi x over sine pi x. Now, sometimes we can do direct substitution for trig functions, as long as we don't get a zero denominator. So let's think about what would happen if we substituted one for x. Well, if x is one, um, then that's just gonna be cosine pi and sine pi. So pi is right here on the unit circle. The coordinates of this point are uh, negative one comma zero. And remember that the x value is cosine and the y value is sine. Hmm, so at this point, um, if, if x is one, then I'm getting cosine is negative one, which would go up here, and then the sine is zero. So unfortunately, we can't get away with direct substitution because it's undefined. We're getting this zero denominator. But we can use this to help us imagine what's going to happen as we're really, really close to pi. Uh, because as we approach 1 from the left, we're going to get closer and closer to uh, negative 1 and 0. But if we're just a little bit off, we're not quite there yet, then we're going to have something that is really close to negative 1 in the numerator, all right? Something very close to negative 1. And in the denominator, we're going to have something very close to 0, but not quite. So imagine that we have, for example, 0. 0.00001. So if, as we get really close to x, uh, an x value of 1, we're going to get really close to uh, having negative 1 in the numerator, and we're going to have something really, really tiny in the denominator. And in fact, the closer we get to x being 1, the tinier this value is going to be. So if you uh, divide negative 1 by a smaller and smaller and smaller number, that's going to approach infinity. All right, so this limit is infinity. And according to our properties, when we have a numerical limit divided by an infinite limit, the limit is going to be zero. And that's exactly what we have here. What about the limit as x approaches zero from the right of three cotangent x? What will that equal? So let's go ahead and separate that into two separate limits and see what we've got. So the first one is super easy. The limit of a constant is just going to be a constant. So that's that. Now let's look at the second function. So let's talk about the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of cotangent x. Now remember that cotangent is cosine over sine. So we're really talking about the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of cosine x over sine x. So this is a little bit similar to the last problem. Uh, we're approaching 0, so here is 0 radians on the unit circle. The coordinates here are 1, 0. Remember that this is cosine, comma, sine. So as we approach 0, this is going to be approaching 
uh, 1 over 0, which of course will would be undefined. But we are not going to be looking at x being 0. We are approaching 0 um, from the right. So we are approaching 0 from above. So what's going to happen is we're going to get a value that's approximately equal to 1. Uh, as we approach it, we're, it's going to be closer and closer to 1. And we'll be looking at a value that is approximately equal to 0. Not 0, something really, really close. So for example, imagine uh, instead of 0, picture it being 0 0.000001. So hopefully you can see that if you have a number, if you have uh, 1 divided by a number that is really, really teeny, teeny, tiny, that is going to get closer and closer to infinity. All right, one divided by a microscopic number is a really big number. So this is going to approach infinity. Okay, so we have a limit, uh, a numerical limit, and we have an infinite limit. So um, this is a product though. So if, if we think about my oversimplification, then it kind of comes down like this. We have the limit of a numerical value, a positive number, times infinity. All right, when you have a positive number times infinity, the limit is going to be positive infinity. All right, and that's just straight out of our rules. Positive number times infinity, the limits positive infinity. All right, here's the final example. Let's find the limit as x approaches 0 from the left of x squared plus 1 over x. So once again, let's break it down as two separate functions. All right, the sum of two separate functions. And let's see what the limit of each of these would be. Let's start with the limit as x approaches 0 from the left of x squared. Well, that's going to be easy because it's a polynomial. And a polynomial function, you can just do direct substitution. And if I put in 0, that's just going to give me 0. All right, so we have a numerical limit of 0 for that one. Um, and how about the limit as x approaches 0 from the left of 1 over x? So obviously, if we uh, substituted 0 for x, we would just get 1 over 0, which would be undefined. But luckily, we're not going to 0. We're approaching 0 from the left. So we're going to get really, really close to 0. Um, because we're approaching 0 from the left, this is going to be a negative number. Um, but we're approaching 0. So this is going to be a really, really small negative number. All right? Really small negative number. Okay, like in your mind, uh, picture having 1 over negative 0 0.00001. All right, so the closer we get to 0, the bigger this value is going to be, but will it be positive or negative? Uh, it's going to be negative because we're dividing 1 by a negative number. We're coming from the left of 0 on the number line. Coming from the left, these are negative numbers over here. So it's going to be huge in absolute value, but it's going to be negative. So we are talking about a limit of negative infinity. Okay, so if we take a, lim a limit of 0 and we're adding that 
with a limit of negative infinity, guess what we're going to get? Negative infinity. Okay, the oversimplification is 0 plus negative infinity, the limit's going to be negative infinity.